today I'm giving away these free planner stickers and the link to these are in the description down below. But today we're gonna to be discussing different ways that you could use them. And if you don't wanna use these the same way that I'm using them, you can still get use out of the stickers on this sheet, just maybe not some of the headers in the top right corner. I printed these onto white sticker paper, but they can also be printed onto standard copy or printer paper and then cut out and glued onto your planner page. Let's go over what comes on this sheet. We have full boxes, checklist stickers, functional icons, functional boxes, and then over here it says expected on the left side and actual on the right side. Underestimating or overestimating how long it takes me to actually do something is something that I have kind of always struggled with. So I've been trying to come up with solutions for dealing with this and getting a better understanding of how long everything takes. So this is my attempt at doing this. And I want to make it clear that this isn't meant to be repeated every week. It's just for one week. What we're going to be doing is putting our expected tasks for the day, kind of time blocking it out for what you actually plan on doing. And then the right side is going to be how your day actually went. And the reason why we're doing this is because physically tracking how your time is actually spent can help you to visualize the differences in how you wanted to spend your day versus how you actually spent your day. And that could possibly help you to identify the trouble areas. So for example, maybe you had planned to clean the kitchen during that hour on Tuesday night, but you got distracted and you ended up on Facebook for an hour instead. Maybe you think that your issue is TV, but then after tracking your time, you realize that a lot of your time is actually going into online shopping. Tracking your time can also help you to identify where and also why time is wasted and then that can hopefully spur ideas about how you can maybe restructure your day or your immediate environment to improve your productivity. In the book Atomic Habits by James Clear, he writes about the third law of behavior change for creating a good habit, which is to make it easy. And one of the ways that you can make doing a good habit easy is by removing any obstacles that are preventing you from starting that good habit. So if I wanted to work out when I got home from work, but I ended up watching TV instead, to prevent this from happening again in the future, I can put out my workout clothes the night before so that I automatically change into them when I get home. And I can also set up the yoga mat and weights so that it's as easy as possible to start the workout when I get home. Tracking your time also gives you accountability throughout your day. So if you are writing in your planner what you're doing and it's not matching up with the expected column, you know that something is off. That tells you that you need to change what you're doing. And we also tend to underestimate or overestimate how long tasks take to do. I remember when I created the how long does it take insert and I timed myself doing different chores, I was shocked by how quickly they are actually done. And we can say the reverse is true. While maybe people don't realize how much TV they are watching per day, Americans spend on average 3.1 hours per day watching television. So when you have an accurate understanding of how long things actually take, you are more likely to accurately plan out your day and are less likely to either over or under schedule yourself. So if you want to try this, but you're worried that you will forget to update your planner, you could set alarms on your phone at the different times that you want to update your planner. So I am going to set my alarm to go off whenever a new time block is started. So I'm going to be trying this out for a week and I'll let you know how it goes at the end of this week. You and me stuck on the ocean now, nothing but waves in this villain in. I wanna dry up, but you 
just keep on going, don't you? I don't even know how we got here. All my reasoning have disappeared. I want to bury the hatchet and find the way back to our home, our home, our home. We don't have to drift inside. There were two main things that I learned from doing this activity. The first is that I need to get rid of some bad habits because they're preventing me from being as productive in the morning as I'd like to be. So for example, I wasn't able to wake up on Monday and Tuesday at 5.30 a.m. like I wanted to because I was too tired and my plan had been to get some editing done before I got ready for the work day. But doing this activity made me reflect on why I was unable to sleep and I realized that I was probably having caffeinated beverages like coffee or zip fizz too late in the day which may have been preventing me from being able to fall asleep at night. So I decided to make a rule that I couldn't have those after 2 p.m. and then I was able to follow through on the plan for the rest of the week. Another thing that this activity made me aware of is that I really underestimate the amount of time that it takes me to do something. For example, video editing throughout the week took longer than I was hoping it would take. So I had to make up for that by not getting some of the things that I wanted to get done on the weekdays and using that time to work on editing. Next week, I'll make sure to schedule in additional hours. Time is something that is abstract, so I think that converting into something that is visual, something that I can physically see, is really helpful for my brain. So I decided to start kind of like graphing out the number of hours things take. Previously, I showed you how I was creating a how long does it take insert and I just wrote down like 30 minutes or 45 minutes and I realized that I couldn't really conceptualize what that meant. I felt that maybe drawing it out so I can visually see the amount of time that something takes will help me if I use this as a reference while I'm planning out my week. So if that's something that you struggle with too, visualizing something like time, in your brain and trying to understand how long it actually takes maybe doing something like this would be helpful. Whether or not you decide to use these free planner stickers to try out this activity of comparing your expected use of time versus actual use of time or whether you just want to use them for fun, I hope that you enjoy this free planner sticker printable and I'll see you next Saturday. Bye! I'ma go too fast